I'm going to post two videos on uh, tangents. Uh, this is part one, and each video is going to address a very uh, different set of skills. Uh, well, first, let's define a tangent. A tangent is a line or a segment that intersects a circle at one point and one point only. So it doesn't go through the circle, it just touches at that one point, which is called the point of tangency. In this case, it's point A. So line L is tangent to circle O at point A. And when you have a tangent line and a radius that come together at that point of tangency, then there's a very, very nice little degree here of 90 degrees. That's a right angle. And that's significant because now we can like create all sorts of like really fun little right triangle problems where we have <clears throat> you know right triangles we use the Pythagorean theorem we can use all sorts of cool stuff so let's go ahead and do a few start with number one so here we have segment AB is a tangent to this circle I'll call this point C so segment AB is tangent to circle C which means this is a right um, a right angle uh, actually in this case we're trying to figure that out. So it's kind of like a backwards problem. So we're trying to figure out if that's a right angle. Uh, we don't know that yet. So we're going to kind of use the Pythagorean theorem converse to see if this in fact is 90 degrees. So here we go. We're going to say is 12 squared plus 16 squared equal to the hypotenuse squared 21? So let's see. We're going to put a question mark and we're going to solve this guy. We got 144 plus 16 squared is 256, and is that equal to 441? And let's see, 256 plus 144 is 400, which does not equal 441. So the answer to this is no. Segment AB is not tangent to circle C. So in that case the angle is not 90 degrees. And let's go to number two. All right, same type of question. Number two is asking is segment AB tangent to circle C? Circle C being that one. All right, so we really just need to find out if this angle right here is 90 degrees. That's the, the goal. All right, so let's see. We've got ourselves a, right, a potential right triangle, so we're going to say 15 squared plus 8 squared. Does that equal something squared? And that something is going to be this right here. We need to figure out what that is. It's comprised of two smaller segments. The first segment is 10, so that goes from here to here. And this segment right here is a very, very simple segment to figure out as well. If you know that 8 is your radius, we know that's our radius. And radii are the same all the way around a circle. So this is 8 as well. It goes from the center to a point on the circle. It just so happens that it keeps going. So the whole segment CB is actually 18 squared, 18 uh, units long. So we're going to go 15 squared is 225 plus 64. Does that equal 18 squared? I think that's 324. Let's see, 324 is right. And I can tell right away it doesn't work. Uh, 225 and 64. Uh, that's 289. That doesn't work. That's not equal to two to 324. So again, this answer would be no. Number three. Is segment AB tangent to circle C? Let's put a letter over here too. We'll call this point D. All right. So this one's a little bit different, right? It has a, dia a diameter drawn in and we're trying to determine if this is a right angle right there. 
All right, and to do that, we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem again. So I have 7.3 squared plus something squared. Does that equal 17.8 squared? That's the, the goal here. And the real question is, what is that something? It's going to be the other leg of our triangle. So we, we look at our triangle, and I've got, I've got an 8 right here. That's only the radius, though, so which means this is 8 as well. So the whole segment is 8 plus 8, which is 16. All right, so we go, you need to use your calculators here. That's totally fine. We've got 53.29 plus, uh, we already said that's 256. Does that equal 17.8 squared is 316.84. And if I add these together, I can see again that it's not true. Uh, but we'll add them together anyway, 256 plus 53.29, that's going to be 309.29, that does not equal 316.84, so again this answer is no. If ever this turns out true, then the answer would be yes. So that means that this angle right in here is something different, something other than 90 degrees. Alrighty, let's move on to number four. Number four is a little different problem. Now we're assuming the problem is going to tell us that this is a tangent line, so we know that that's a right angle. And our question is very simple find the radius. So here we go, we're just going to say a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We'll say a is the radius. B is 10.4 squared, does that, or excuse me, equals 13 squared. And we just need to solve this thing, so we're going to square the middle term, we get 108.16, that's 169. So 169 minus 108.16 is going to be 60.84. And we'll take the square root of that and we get 7.8. So the radius is 7.8 right in here. All right, and again, that problem told us that uh, if we called this like segment AB, it, it already said off the bat, um, I know you can't see the directions, but it says off the bat that this thing is tangent. And as soon as you see that word tangent and you know for a fact that it's a tangent line, then that's when you can fill in this right angle right there. All right, a couple more here, number five. Number five, and, and again, I'll, I'll repeat this a lot, but the best way to watch these videos is to, is to, once you see the problem, pause it, work through it yourself, and then when you're finished and you have an answer, then go back and press play and see if you got it right. So here we go, we've got eight here as a radius, so that means this is eight as well. So we have a definite tangent line. This, this problem tells us that this is a tangent line. That's what we're looking for. So it's going to be 8 squared plus the tangent squared is equal to 17 squared. Remember, the whole thing is 17. So we have 64. And let's see, that's 289, I think. 17 squared. I should, I should have these memorized. Yeah, that's right. 289 minus 64 is 225. Take the square root of that. And finally, we get a nice, neat number. It's 15. All right, so this angle, or this segment right here is 15. Number six. Number six, we have, let's see, this is 12. And the problem is telling us that it's a tangent line, so we know that we can use Pythagorean theorem. 12 squared plus 16 squared is equal to... Uh, now this one's kind of interesting because it's a segment that has 12 plus something. We'll call that something x. So it's going to be 12 plus x quantity squared. Put it in parentheses. So here we go. 144 plus, uh, what did we say, 256. Uh, I think that's 400. 
does that equal or is that excuse me that is equal to uh, now we're going to foil this so we kind of like expand it expand the binomial and multiply first times first outside inside and last so now we have a quadratic on the right side so here we go 144 plus 24x plus x squared when you have a quadratic you're going to want to get all the terms on one side so what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 400 from both sides and that'll bring me with a zero equal sign uh, negative 256 plus 24x plus x squared Let's rearrange this so the x squared is over here, the 24x is right here, the minus 256 is right here, and the 0 is right there. All right, a lot of different ways to, uh, to calculate this guy. If you want to, you can, you can factor it, you can uh, use the quadratic formula, you can do all sorts of stuff. Uh, what you can also do, and I'll pull this up here in a second, what you can also do is graph it. Use your graphing calculator and then find the uh, answer that way which we will do. So here we go. Let's go to my calculator. I'm going to plug it in here. I've got, uh, let's see, x squared. Let me put it on a large screen. I've got x squared plus 24x minus 256. Now when I graph this, it's not going to look very good because of the really, really um, small uh, y-intercept. So let's zoom 6. Still not going to look very good. We're going to be able to see a little bit of it though. And we're looking for where this parabola crosses the x-axis. So let's zoom out again. Zoom 3. And that gives me my two, um, my two points here. To get a general sketch of this thing, it's going to look, it's a parabola, but it's got a really, really small, really low uh, y-intercept that's down here somewhere. So it's just like a big, you know, sort of like bowl like this where it crosses the x-axis. Those are your two answers. So a couple different ways to calculate those. I'll show you, uh, I guess, one or two here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to press second trace which is going to give me this menu and then I'm going to go down to intersect no nope, I'm going to go to zero sorry I'm going to go to zero and press enter it's going to ask me a couple questions here and uh, the first zero I'm going to try to find is is um, let's see this guy right here I'm going to try to find that zero first using this method so it's asking me for a left hand bound and all I need to do is kind of put my cursor in the, to the left of that thing and believe it or not that is to the left of it if you wanted to press left a couple more times you certainly can do that and just press enter and then press right until your cursor is to the right of that potential zero so right there will be totally fine and that's going to ask you to guess and just press left or get it really close to that thing and it'll give you the answer. 8 comma 0. So that means x equals 8 is a solution to this thing. And it looks like there's another one over here. All right, I'll show you a different method how to calculate that. We can use our table. So press second graph will give you the table. And um, Let's see, I have my table set for my trig class, my trig problem. So I'm going to go to table set. I'm going to tell my table to change by one every time. So that's going to give me really nice x values here. All right, I'm going to press up and down until, well, let's go down to eight, and I'll show you what eight gives us as a y value. Eight was a, one of our answers down here, if you remember. So eight comma zero is a solution. It's a zero of this function. It crosses the x-axis at x equals eight. So on your table function, all you're looking for is for this column to be zero. So let's scroll up. Let's see here. 
might take a little while, but it's not too bad. There it is. Negative 32 is also a zero. So those are our two solutions to this quadratic. Again, that's where the graph crosses the x-axis. Now, this is kind of like more of a, a real-life problem because uh, while it, if you're in Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 class, that's a good answer. You would keep it like that. Uh, in this class, only really one of them is going to work. I mean, if you think about that for a second, what value can you actually, which, which of these two values can you actually put into this position? All right, this is actually, this is describing a length of a segment. So it can't be negative, clearly. So there's no way we're going to use 30, negative 32. All right, the answer we're going to use is 8. All right, and that makes sense, right? If we put 8 in there, then we have a 12, a 16, and this whole segment is 12 plus 8, or 20. And if you check that, I'm not going to do it now, but if you check that, that'll work in the Pythagorean theorem. Maybe I will do it. 144 plus 256 equals 400. That's definitely true. All right, if you didn't want to go through that whole calculator business, all you would have to do is just set up your two sets of binomial parentheses and factor it. All right, it would factor uh, actually fairly easily. So really, this is a really big um, C value, which is why I don't usually like to factor. Uh, but you certainly can. It would come out to a nice, easy, easy factors. And that's it. So those are uh, that's part one of the of the tangent lesson. Part two will be coming up next.